Welcome to the American Folklife Center's 2024 Homegrown Concert Series. I'm Stephen Winnick, and for many years, this series has brought the best of traditional folk music and dance to Washington, D.C. And this year, we are very pleased to have the Sky Consort with Emma Björling in our series. And so we are here with members of the Sky Consort and Emma Björling to have a conversation about the concert that they just performed here in the Whittall Pavilion in the Library of Congress. So welcome and thank you for being in the series. Thanks for having us. Nice to see you. And what I'm going to do is, um, just so that we get everybody's name pronounced correctly, I'm going to ask you to go through and, and say your names for the interview. My name is Sean Dager. Jag heter Emma Björling. <laughs> Amanda Kiesrat. Je m'appelle Simon Alexandre. Thank you all very much. And I'm going to start by asking some questions to each of you about your musical background before forming the group, like what, how you came to the point where you would join a group like the Sky Consort. So I guess we'll just go in order and start with Sean. I was really interested in, uh, in Celtic folk music and other folk musics when I was late teens, early 20s, yet studying uh, theory and composition and uh, classical theory and composition, I guess I should say. And uh, I was really looking for a way to, uh, to bring those two things together, to do one in the manner of the other. And then I met up with the other co-founders, uh, Alex Keeler and Matthew White, and um, we, we started this project. And you were also involved in La Nef in, in Montreal, so explain a little bit about what that so, is. So it was actually Sky Consort that led me to La Nef. After, um, after having done several projects with Sky Consort, you know, by then, you know, Amanda was in it from the very beginning, and we had lots of different collaborators, and eventually we sort of, as a, as a collective, got poached by La Nef to participate in, in, in their concert series, and that was really great, because La Nef, you know, had funding and uh, administrative infrastructure, and they could put on concerts that we would have otherwise been doing sort of in people's barns or whatever. They right. could put them in, in concert halls and stuff. So that, that was nice to work with LENF, and then ultimately the LENF project led us to working again with, uh, with, with Emma. Great, and I, I would also uh, just mention that you're well known in another field, which is <laughs> sea shanties. Yes. And explain your, your sea shanty projects and particularly how you brought it into the modern world of video gaming. It was the, about 10, 12 years ago, I got hired by Ubisoft um, to sing sea shanties on a series of video games, the Assassin's Creed series of video games. And it was really their initiative. They wanted sort of something that sounded authentic. And uh, one of the producers said, oh, you, you sort of sound like a folk singer and so come sing these songs so I I went and sang the songs and um, it proved to be hugely popular and I, I t took a great interest then in in sea shanties as well and have been running with it ever since all right <laughs> well thank you Sean and we will now ask Emma some questions about her uh, musical background mm. well folk I come from a musical family um, my granddad, pater, paternal granddad, played the fiddle and played traditional music. So uh, I sort of grew up with it. Uh, but I did study both classical music and jazz before I sort of, well, gave up and, and started <laughs> doing folk music, like, or found my way, found my home in music, I should say. <laughs> um, and since then, it's basically only been folk music in many, many different bands and constellations and groups. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll mention two of them because um, a, a little secret, um, Emma has been in our concert series twice before, and we've done two of these interviews before, though mm -hmm. this is the first time we've been in the same country yeah. while we were doing them. So uh, Emma's group, uh, Kongero, is in the series from a couple of years ago, and then she was in this series as a duo with Petrus Johansson. So look for those videos too on the Library of Congress website. Um, yeah. uh, all right, and so talk a little about your other musical <coughs> projects. What are the... Oh, well, so Kongero is a vocal quartet. We, we sing Nordic traditional and uh, original uh, folk music, um, all female. Mm -hmm. And then I play also in Lee, which is uh, folk pop 
Swedish folk pop, which <clears throat> is where I, I um, play with Petrus. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, and I have various other, like a Danish band that wants to play Swedish traditional Christmas music, for example, and, <laughs> and all kinds of, and a duo also that does um, uh, um, Nobel Prize winner, winning uh, author and poet, his lyrics or poems uh, that we set music to, and that's uh, a classical like organist and me. Excellent. So, all good. All right, well, <laughs> look, for, look, look for Emma online as well. Um, <laughs> and, and I will ask Amanda, um, I guess you can tell us a little bit more of the background of Lenef since you were in it for of for, Lenef for or, or Sky Consort, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, all of that, yeah. Just begin with wherever you want to okay. talk about your background. Yeah. So I studied cello, and it brought me to playing at in my uh, sort of post undergraduate uh, playing Baroque cello. So I actually play Baroque cello most of the time. Mm -hmm. I play in a Baroque orchestra in Montreal called Arion. Um, so when I was at McGill University. I was going to McGill University with Matthew White and with Alex Keeler, who mm -hmm. were friends of Sean, that uh, decided to do this Sky Concert project. And the first project was with like Baroque instruments and a countertenor. So nice. they they were like, oh, we should you know we should have Amanda come play. And I guess I just sort of stuck after that. <laughs> I've been in all the projects since then, but you know now we say since the beginning, but it was kind of the beginning, I guess. But um, yeah, and then the other things that I do, um, I have a group of my own called Space Time Continuo, and uh, it's the lower instruments of the Baroque, and we throw together projects where we like listen to the harp or the organ or the harpsichord or the lirone or the, the viola de gamba and bassoon and stuff like that, and we do projects like that. So those are my... Those are my big ones. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And is it is it a, is it a challenge to work in those those lower you know early music instruments into into the folk music world or? Oh, it's it's not folk music. It's it's baroque music. So you're doing and, a baroque Renaissance music. Yeah. So I see, I'm yeah. mostly most of the work that I do is still in the yeah. sort of classical vein or whatever. It's interesting. We are okay. seeing cello more in folk music now yeah. than we did, say, 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. um, how, how has it been as a journey as, as a cellist to get into? Yeah, well, I'm really folk. inspired by a lot of the younger people who are playing folk music in cello and, and have called upon them. Like Natalie Haas, of course, is a huge, sure. uh, I mean, I think she's been a huge influence over so many people. And another woman in Montreal called Elizabeth Giroux mm -hmm. that plays in a group called Ete. Um, oh, yeah. And it's funny because when I when I've talked to them, they're, they're like, "I'm older than them," and they're like, "Oh well, we we heard you playing this music," and that you know, and I was like, "But ah, they they know so much," and I've had lessons with both of them, and then really benefited from from their expertise in that. I mean, I, I hope I've benefited. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they're really inspiring. They're really inspiring me and 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 younger cellists as well. Amazing. Yeah. Well, Thanks, and we've had yeah. both Natalie and Ete oh, in yeah, our concert yeah, yeah, yeah. before, so yeah. Yeah, yeah they're so, so great. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Alors, Simon Alexandre, oui. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm also like Amanda. Um, I come from the classical uh, side of music. And uh, so I've, I was interested in folk music, like in my late teens, I would say, but mostly what brought me to folk music was the Nicole Harpa, which is like a pretty strange thing for a Canadian, I would yeah. say. So I, how I came up to play that instrument is, is that I was uh, really looking for a place to do a student exchange when I was uh, 17. And so I went to this folk music festival uh, north of Montreal, and I saw this guy who was playing like sitar, uh, like a thousand of instruments, and then he showed like this, uh, this Nicole Harpa at some point, and I was like, that's where I'm going. <laughs> so, so yeah, so I chose my, the country where I would be studying for a year then, and then I went to Sweden, I got my Nicole Harpa, I got some lessons, and that's uh, really my first real um, taste of folk music. So I brought back Scandinavia, Sweden with me, I would say. And then I kept, um, I, I mean, what do I do with a nickel harpa in Montreal when I'm 18 years old, you know? So, so it basically it went in my wardrobe and I was like, I'm gonna take you back someday. And I went and I studied my classical violin for a while, did my studies. And uh, like Amanda, I play in early music ensembles and symphonies as well. And during the pandemic, 
uh, that's where I really picked it up again. Uh, so as uh, all musicians were at home doing nothing, well, I had a project with a friend, we started that, uh, and then I restarted playing the Nickel Harpa, and then these guys contacted me uh, so that I could join the band when, uh, when Alex was not free. Uh, so, yeah, so this is how I got to the folk music and with the Nikon Harpa. Then I did some Celtic and I went more into the French Canadian folk music side as well. Yeah, so talk about that a little bit because the, the sort of fiddling is a huge part of Quebec and French Canadian yeah, folk absolutely. music, but you were a classical violinist before starting yeah. that. So, how was that uh, transition for you? Uh, so for sure, it's uh, it's such a different style of playing and a different way to approach the instrument and the music. And uh, a bit like Amanda says, like I, I'm constantly trying like to learn more, like uh, trying to do the polyrhythmy, you know, the, the, the foot yeah. tapping as I'm playing, uh, just getting the natural swing of the folk music. So um, it's uh, it's it's not hard to navigate once you get the feel of it, but for sure, like I think. As a band, it's also, uh, I'm a folk musician, but there will probably always be some sort of classical flair in what I do. And this is a bit what is part of this band, this mix of different tradition cultures and also playing styles. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so just doing my best in like learning a new language, basically. Yeah, well, I mean, definitely both in terms of tone <laughs> and in terms of what you can do with your arrangements, having that classical background really you know, is a game changer, I think, for, for musicians. It's great to have someone with both styles, mm -hmm. at, at, you know, in, in your repertoire. So that's, that's great. All right, so there's a, there's a famous story that you guys tell about the founding of this group. And so I don't know who wants to <coughs> tell it. But. I'll, I'll start. We were, with, with La Nef, we were doing a project where it was called Saga, and we wanted to tell a Viking saga. We have a storyteller and all these instruments playing incidental music and interlude, musical interludes. And Alex, the other, the other member of the band on nickel harpa and fiddle, he had met Emma with Lu at folk festivals and he said, he said oh, we should, get, we should get Emma to come and, and sing in the project. And, uh, and she reluctantly agreed. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the the project uh, the project happened. It was it was great. It was great fun. We met Emma, and and you guys can attest to this in in these projects that are sort of happening for a short period of time. You know, people meet and get together and say like, oh, we should start a band like this. Oh, we should start a band. But it's a bit like we should do lunch. You know, you, it, it never <laughs> right. it never never actually happens. Right. And so we did the show. You know, clap clap clap. Drove him into the airport. Or you took the bus to the airport, and that, that was that was going to be it. Goodbye, Emma. Goodbye forever. <laughs> and then, at the airport, what happened, Emma? At the airport, I looked at the screen, the screens, and they said, "Castle, castle, castle, castle." All flights uh, from the east coast, east of Canada, and also the north um, east coast of, of uh, the U.S. to Europe were canceled because of a storm in Iceland or over Iceland. So it wasn't just like my flight and I could just sit there and roll my thumbs for, for a few hours. No, uh, no flights. So I called up Sean, he's like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck in Montreal, I think. And could you like, could I stay with you until I get a new ticket back? Uh, so I ended up staying on, their, on these guys' couch for three days. and. After like some time during those three days, we actually started talking about like actually creating something together. <laughs> and so it happened. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the logistical challenge of having members in Canada and members in Sweden must be <laughs> must be rough. How does it, how does it work in terms of actually, you know, yeah. rehearsing, mm -hmm. you know, putting together gigs and that kind of thing? Well, we work uh, like we do more like projects, you can say like we do a tour or we have a creative period of time that we usually combine with some gigs anyway. But so we plan those quite far in advance and we have uh, a booking agent working for us as well. And uh, so, yeah, and we also we I usually come a few days earlier if we're doing uh, tours on this side, or they would come a few days before the first show, sure. so we have some time to rehearse. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sounds good. But we're all working in different projects and lots of different mm -hmm. things anyway. So yeah. we would only probably be doing things periodically anyway. Mm. So it's, it's just a nice way of organizing it. You know, this, that when, when Emma's here or when we go to Europe, it's like, okay, now, now it's this. Now this, mm -hmm. ideally, yeah. I, yeah. this is what we're doing. <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, we can really focus on it and then, and then we get sick of each other and then it's great because then we don't, see, you know, then it's eight, six months or four months or two months or whatever <laughs> until the next time. Yeah. So it's actually, I, I see more advantages actually, not that I live on the other side of the pond, but, but uh, to, to work as uh, in very set times. That's focused. That's it, yeah. yeah, focused, yeah. Makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so talk a little bit about your process of arranging traditional music, because you do original <coughs> songs and tunes and also traditional. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about the traditional arrangements first, but what's, what process do you? What's well, the through? same process for, you know, if someone comes with a, a song that's a melody or a tune that's a melody, we treat it like a, like a traditional tune and we, we, we sort of mm -hmm. go at it and, until we come up with, with something like, I, I don't know, uh, I can't say anything more about the process of what we do. <laughs> well, we, we, for, yeah. for, for me, it's like, yeah. it was so new when I, when I got in the band, and it's like not unusual, but by, for me, yes. But so, so, as you said, like we bring a song, a melody, and then what happens now is like we try out the melody, then some chords uh, come out, probably from Sean, and then like uh, there's a, a dialogue between these two with the bass and the, the chords, they, they put up something, and then there's the melody, either M or I, and then we, we add up textures, and then after that we talk about the form, then we add parts, sometimes we decide that we're gonna mix a new tune with it, so <laughs> it's just like layers of complexities add up to each other, but the process is always together. It's never like somebody uh, arrives with a set like arrangement, like I want you to do that or that, so everybody's really autonomous and makes what they want with the music, and that's how basically we work. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Well said, eh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah pretty good. <laughs> and then with, with songs that, uh, that you write, um, presumably, typically one of you is the composer, is that right? And then it, it develops from there. Or sometimes like people can come and just say like, oh, I thought about maybe this might sound cool here. And if mm -hmm. usually people are, you know. <laughs> Thumbs up, yeah. <laughs> and like for the last song we did at, at the concert today, uh, I wrote this many years ago. And mm -hmm. it was a typical yeah. like Swedish polska with an A part and a B part, uh, but it was like nah, no, nah, something lacking, you know, something missing, a little bit of something. So so Simon just took it on and wrote the the C part and the D part together with with Sean. Oh so, yeah. Uh, in Victoria, I think. Yeah, we had <laughs> been, it, it's because yeah. we had been playing this other tune, the like Kvarnforsen, yeah. which was composed by someone and. And we didn't. We wanted to do that something like that arrangement we we're doing, but we didn't because want to. because we had the we had the voices on it. Yeah. So we wanted, yeah. and it, because it was copyright, so we wanted to have something that was like that, but that was something that we had written. Yeah. <laughs> so. So yeah, we took Emma's A and B <laughs> section, and then I said, okay, maybe for the C part we could. Have, have, these, have these, these chords, chords. <laughs> and then maybe the D part, yeah. D part could be just chords. Simon, can you can you write a melody that goes with these chords? <laughs> and then he wrote a, a D part as well, like a C and a D yeah. part. So. Bam, there you go. Yeah. Combine different. <laughs> Very nice. It really happens like different for each song, yeah. I think, actually, now yeah. that we're talking about it. Sometimes yeah. it's like it starts with a melody and a bass line, and then yeah. we add stuff, you know, <laughs> yeah. on top of that. So. Or like Emma's Ode to the Vaughn, the Ode to the Spring, right? Which she'll just start singing the melody. Well, you just see what, see what comes out of yeah. your instrument yeah. while mm. she's doing that. And it's mm. like, well, that's terrible. I'll do something else. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Yeah, but we also like we try to keep a, an open mind, and we don't want to we don't want to play songs that's like any of us is like yeah about you know. So even it doesn't matter if it's a traditional song or melody or if it's uh, some someone's composition. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got the right to say I don't believe in that in that song for us, right. you know, and that's all fine. And because we're playing from <clears throat> from memory, for the most part. It, it, it behooves you to come up with something that is natural, you know, something that you would play because you're going to have to remember it. That's true. For for all the all the 
for all the songs. months we don't see yeah. each other also. <laughs> so Apparently. you couldn't, you, I don't think it would be as easy if, you, if we were sort of reading a chart saying, oh yes, and oh yes, and then bar 17, I have to play G sharp, oh I see. <laughs> you play something that comes out of you, and I'm sure this applies to all folk bands, you know, you play yeah. something that comes out of you, and then next time you get to that spot in the song, it just comes out of you again. But it is still flexible because it's not always the same. Mm. It's like yeah. snowflakes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> True. You know, like we can, I mean, it's fun. That's what's fun about playing. Like sometimes we, the, the classical concerts, we like practice really hard all week and then you do it once and that's it, over, right? But when we get to play our show so many times in a row, like we can, we can be like, we can hear like someone did a little joke mm -hmm. or someone messed up there <laughs> and we're like, ah, but nobody, nobody would probably notice it right. for us, right? Anyway. Sure. Very nice. So. Uh, one thing that's interesting about your group is, of course, the repertoire is very varied. Things from uh, from Scandinavia, things from French Canada, things from France, England. Um, so how do you, uh, and you're all in other bands and playing other mu music all the time when you come across a song, how do you decide that this is one that's good for Sky Consort? What is it that identifies that's a, a song? Good question. <laughs> I think for me, I can I can actually like hear how it would sound with four female voices, or how it would sound with like cello and fiddle and Nathan Hawkman and Basuki. Uh, it's like I can I can picture it. Mm -hmm. I think, and and sometimes it's also like we actually like for our latest album, we realized or Simon actually realized when we were like, okay, this is the repertoire that we're gonna record for our our album. It was like. We are missing a sad, pretty Nordic love song. <laughs> okay, then we find one from that from that perspective. And I might not have ever thought about that specific song for this project, but it goes. It's like so. The songs come. Well, we went through. Uh, you had like a little book. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I went through my went through. my song books, and it's yeah. like, yeah. what about this one? Meh. What about this one? <laughs> Meh. What about this one? Yay. He really liked it. Yeah. He chose it. Nice. And you can, well, Emma says you can picture what it sounds like. You know, if, I'm, if I have a song that I think, oh, we could do it with this band, you know, I think about, well, what's, what would Emma do on this song? What would Amanda do in this song? What would Simon do in this song? And if I can think like, oh, there could be something. Like, I don't have to tell them what to do, obviously, but if I can imagine that there is something that, that they could do, then it would be something I'd propose. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, yeah. So I've, one of the great things about this concert is you took us literally from the Arctic to the Antarctic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> with, with, with yeah. you know, South Georgia whaling yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, stations in there. Um, so again, you know, it's a, it's a very wide and, and broad selection of music. Um, what, what do you feel unifies the Scandinavian, French Canadian, Celtic? You know, what is the, what is the principle? Oh, so that, many things. Uh -huh. I mean, so many similar stories. Uh, in all the traditions that we do, all the all the, the dreadful, the dreadful <laughs> medieval the, the balance. balance yeah. No, but I mean, there there so many things, and also since we're mixing like traditional music with some like with baroque style of playing or arranging, and Celtic and Nordic and whatever, it's like we are the unifying factor actually, yeah. and not <laughs> yes. the, the actual songs or 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 music. Yeah, and that that sort of gives it its own character and that's mm -hmm. the perfect way to... Sure, it might not be a, a doctoral thesis, but it's okay for a band. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's right. So, yeah, so, um, so let's talk a little bit about your, um, your albums, because I know yeah. um, you've worked hard on those. There's, mm -hmm. there's two of them now. So let's talk about the first one first and then we'll talk about the latest, yeah. So, who wants to oh. it chime was, in? It was, the first one was like, we were like, we had just started going and we were like... We were, we're new. Yeah, like, I mean, it, was, it, was, it was a search of what, what can we do as a scramble for a repertoire and we were sort of booking this tour for six months ahead and we we'd booked a weekend and we'd booked the other weekend and we weren't going to be able to book the days in between. So we said, I said, let's record an album in those three days, you know, and the Emma sort of went, like, <gasps> yeah. okay. And so it was a real scramble to find stuff that worked for us and... <laughs> Which you know forced us to be creative in how we found the repertoire or wrote it, and uh, and how we arranged it too. Mm -hmm. So it was necessity, you know, being the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's there was the, the mood for that album. Yeah, and I still go back to it and listen. 
can't imagine it turned out that good. <laughs> uh, like, because it felt like, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing, like in the studio even. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe that it brings a specific focus to it also, yeah. that you're not, it's not like, yeah, I've done this before, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's got yeah, it's got freshness and yeah. some spontaneity because yeah, you're yeah, you're, you're working it out. Sure, and yeah. one of the songs I think it was La Femme du Soldat. We just we just proposed it for like m maybe a week before the album. Yeah. You know, we sort of said, I said, oh, let's let's, let's do this one, and we we worked it up, and uh, you know, f six days later we're recording it. And yeah. in this album, a lot of things that were the eventual arrangements happened in the studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're like, oh, let's add this here, let's add that there. Yeah. And then later on, because we had just really, really just started, right? So then later on, we ha had to go back and listen and say, like, what am I supposed to be doing here? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sort of learn it, learning yeah. it from the arrangement, which happened then, because we, we could right. actually, at the board, like, take something and put it here. Or do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's more like making a puzzle. Yeah. You know? yeah. But um, the, as, as uh, he was saying about the slow song before, the first album is kind of more more droney and introspective mm -hmm. and so then we were like the second we're like we'll make it more like upbeat you know and mm -hmm. and that's when uh, he was uh simon said oh there's not really any of those nice slow lamenting <laughs> things we're yeah. like oh right right yeah. <laughs> nice. yeah. yeah so let's talk about the new album yeah. the odin ballad we had the curse of time <laughs> yeah yeah well um we wanted to to record and release it earlier but since those years that just went by <laughs> for some years. reason <laughs> yeah. uh no but so we had some time to we we stayed in contact dur during covid online of course and we sent songs back and forth and but we couldn't really do anything because we don't get we can't really get creative in the way we have to or want to without seeing each other so I think it, it was like February 23 or something. I can't remember. But anyway, then we started really, 22. really working. 22. Yeah. It was, yeah, 22. Then we started really working on the, on the, the songs. Uh, and then it felt more that we could take our time with this second album. I don't know if that's to our advantage. Maybe we didn't need the pressure. It's okay. It was still a scramble at the end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, but but we did bring a lighter, brighter, well, flair or or touch to that to that album, and you can see it on the cover as well. One is dark and one is yeah. bright. Yeah. <laughs> More like summery, and, yeah, up tempo. Yeah. Well, one of one of the things you mentioned on on your website is that the words ode and ballad mm -hmm. are in. French, English, and Swedish. Mm -hmm. They're in all the languages. Mm -hmm. um, so how did that sort of unite, how, how, you know, how did that theme tie this album? Yeah, we, we had a big conversation about mm -hmm. finding those words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that works. Actually, yeah, it was like, yeah. yeah. Took us some, some brainstorming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's fun uh, because to have like a, since the first album is just self-titled, right? Right. It's just Très Consort and Amand Jörgen. But the second one, we sort of wanted to find something that, that tells a little bit about the story uh -huh. of the music. Mm -hmm. And also, we have ballads in on the album, and we have that old, old deal. So, yeah, we gotta, we gotta represent, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very nice. Yeah. So, have you any um, current projects that you'd like to tell us about? Any any uh, plans for the group? It, it oh yeah, we're gonna do a few uh, showcases here mm -hmm. um, in the beginning of next year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to both uh, APAP and uh, Folk Alliance. Right. Uh, other than that, we have another upcoming what tours? U.S. tour in November. Yeah, Scandinavia. The West Coast. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and then Scandinavia in the spring. Yeah. But we're all, you know, we've done long hours in the car now. This these last <laughs> few days. And the conversation about around new repertoire comes, it mm -hmm. keeps coming back, you know, like, oh, there's this song, what about this song? And I, I was like, really, are we already talking about a new album? I feel like the other one just came out. And I, it's, it's great, it's exciting, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I, I can't, you know, we can't promise there'll be a, another album, but it seems like there's the, the, the impetus to, yeah. to, to head that in that direction. Sounds wonderful. All right, is there anything that I haven't touched on that, that you guys would like to tell our audience? <clears throat> 
Steve, you're really comprehensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that has its, you know, it, it has its good points and its bad points. But yes, I've been told that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, I think we covered some good stuff. All right. Well, thank you. And I will mention that um, if you've come across this interview video in isolation on the Library of Congress website or our YouTube channel, that means there's also a concert that you should seek out, and you can find mm -hmm. them both embedded uh, at the Folk Life Today blog in a blog post as well. Um, but please uh, thank one more time our guests, the Sky Consort and Emma Bierling. Thank you. Thanks for, thank you. Having us. Thanks for having us here. Yeah.